So I'm going to talk about how to get started doing a Quest 2 game inside of Unreal Engine. Just the basics, what do you need to install, what do you got to set up, just so you can get started in that sweet, sweet game dev. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install Android Studio. So we're going to search for it real quick. We're going to need a very specific version of it as well to work well with Unreal. And again, the reason we're going to need it is because your Quest 2 is an Android platform. And so Unreal needs uh, the Android kind of information to be able to build to it. So that's kind of why we need it. So what we're going to search for on Google is, or wherever you want to search, Android Software Development Kit Archive. And once we search for this, we're going to end up seeing the second link here or the first one. I think that both work. So it's, um, it's an archive that shows us all the versions of Android Studio. So click on the topmost one, it's going to ask you to agree to, again, all of its sweet terms. Make sure you read all this. And we're looking for 353. So if we scroll down a little bit, we should find right here, just a little bit down the page, Android Studio 353. I'm going to open a bad boy up. I'm on Windows running a 64-bit system. So I'm going to take this link. I like to right-click, open in a new link. All it's going to do is download it um, right here. So when I'm gonna let this finish downloading and once it is, we'll run it, install it and go from there. So now that it has downloaded, we're going to install it. So I'm going to click on my download. It should just take a second here and open up. And then we will install it. And we'll just talk about the settings. That's loud, wow, thanks. So uh, again, yep, I'm just gonna next through this. The defaults here are fine wherever you want to install it. I will suggest just keep it to your default C directory. Usually sometimes programs freak out. Um, yep, I would love to name this Android Studio. Let this extract. And after it's done, we will get back to it. Now that we have finished, we're gonna click next. And we're gonna start up Android Studio for the first time. And there'll be just a little bit of initial setup here just to get it up and running. Make sure everything's hunky dory. So tip of the day, I don't need another tip of the day. Looks like everything should be set up. It might be that I've already had mine set up before. If you have any additional information that comes up here, basically you could just leave it as is, pretty generic. Um, but yeah, at this point now you should have uh, Android Studio up and running. The thing we're gonna need to do is make sure that we set up some of the Android hooks into Unreal. So. Again, a little caveat, you need to have an Unreal Engine 4.25 at least for a lot of the stuff to work. Um, but anyways, so I have my Unreal Engine installed under my C drive, um, program files, Epic Games, and then the versions of the engine. Wherever you have yours installed, just navigate to there now. Okay, so I have uh, Unreal 4.26 installed. I'm gonna open that up. The next thing we're going to do is go to engine um, and then extras. And then we're going to go to Android. And then in here, depending on the platform you have, so either Windows, Mac, or Linux. So I'm on a Windows machine. So I'm going to run this setup Android dot uh, batch file. So I'm going to double click this. It's going to fetch some information real quick. It has succeeded. I just need to press any key to continue. You might have to hit Y or something else to make this work. Boom. We're done with that step now. So now that we've got our Android information installed and we're about to get rid of our project, we need to install the Oculus app so that way when we plug our Quest 2 into our PC, we can get it to talk to it. So all we need to do is come in here and type in Oculus app. The first link will take us exactly where we need to go. And on this page, you should see download software. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna install this. I already have it installed. It's very straightforward. You're gonna install this and what it's gonna allow us to do is to see your Quest um, 2 on your PC. So what you're gonna wanna do is install the Oculus app on your phone. You should be able to see something like this, going to settings, and then you're gonna see your HMD at the top. So the Quest 2. Once you open it up, you'll be able to expand the options, go to more settings, and then from there, developer mode. In developer mode, we just wanna make sure this is ticked over, and then we'll be able to send packaged games and all kinds of files to our PC um, from our Quest. 
Okay, so now we're finally at the step where we're gonna set up our Unreal project. So we're gonna come into Unreal Engine, and make sure that we're at least in engine version 4.25. I'm gonna click launch on 4.26, which is what I currently have installed, which should be perfectly fine for us. Unreal is just going to initialize here and I'm gonna select games because that's where we're gonna end up making here. Click next. I'm gonna use a blank project because it'll be lightweight, no clutter in there. Click next. No starter content or anything else like that. The only thing I'm gonna do is come down here and rename it Ma to Quest 2 Game. Create the project. Unreal is gonna take a second or two to start up here. And once it does, we're just gonna initialize a few of the core settings we need to set up to make sure it works. So once we're here inside of Unreal, I'm just gonna put the default back to the layout. Um, I'm just gonna drag in a cube from over here on basic, just in our level just to make sure that we know um, it's our scene. And from here, I'll go to File, Save Current, and this is just gonna save our map. So I'm gonna go to Content, New Folder. I'm gonna name this Maps. And I'm gonna name this Quest to Map underscore 01. So you can name that whatever you want. And we just created this folder to kind of keep things clean. So save that. So now we have a saved map. Now we wanna make sure that we change our project settings to make sure everything's right. So if we go to edit and plugins, I'm gonna type in this top search bar here, Oculus. And once you do that, you're gonna look for Oculus VR as one of the options and just confirm that this enabled has been ticked. If for some reason it isn't, then don't worry. I'm gonna dismiss this new plugins available, so I don't care. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up for the Android platform, which is what your Quest 2 runs on is an Android platform. So I'm gonna edit project settings. I'm gonna scroll down to platforms, Android. Project is not configured, configured, Ugh, can't speak sometimes. Uh, configure now, goes all green, perfect. The thing we wanna do is change the minimum and target SDK here. So for the minimum, we wanna set this to 23. And for the target, let's set it to 25. And again, this is just to, to know which SDK of the Android to use. The only thing we're gonna do is go down to advanced APK packaging. And under packaging for Oculus mobile devices, we're gonna take this plus sign and click it twice. So once, twice. And you'll see now we have basically enabled um, Unreal to package up. So take all your files, make a little package out of it and send it to the Quest 2 and work there. And also work for the original Quest. The last thing we're gonna do is take a look at some of our rendering settings. So we're gonna first of all come in here we're gonna enable a little bit of multi-sample anti-aliasing, which is just gonna help get rid of the jaggy edges inside of the rendering. So once we do that, come down, we're gonna look for the VR section. And here you're gonna see mobile HDR. We're gonna disable this. It can cause some issues and it'd be kind of expensive. Once we do that, we're gonna to need to restart the engine. So I'm just gonna click restart now. Give it just a couple seconds here and it should be good to go. All right, now that we've done that, we've kind of committed our, our settings, you're gonna see it didn't load to our scene because that cube's gone. So I'm gonna go to maps and I'm gonna go to quest two and you'll see this is our map, but I wanna make sure that this is the map that starts every time we play. So go back to edit, project settings, maps and modes, and then the default maps for the editor start and game map. I'm gonna click this little drop down arrow. I'm gonna go to quest two map underscore 01, which is the map we made. I'm gonna set both these drop downs to that. So now that that's set, we're gonna know that this level is gonna work. So I'm just gonna control S to save. Now I wanna make sure I set up my pawn, which is the little person that I get to become. So I'm gonna possess the little pawn that my VR guy makes. So in my content browser, I'm gonna right click, go to blueprint classes. I'm gonna to go to Pawn, again, this is possessable. This is kind of like the actual character. So I'm gonna name mine Quest 2 Pawn, very original. Open this bad boy up. Inside here, I'm gonna need three things, camera and two hands. So I'm gonna add a component. I'm gonna type in camera. Just add that right at the base at 000. I'm gonna click on add a component and type in motion controller. So right here you see motion controller. And we can just do it again, motion controller, if I can spell. Okay, so 
what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna name mine motion controller L. And the other one here, I can just click F2 on it and name it motion controller R. And then what I'm gonna do over here, once I have motion controller R selected, I'm gonna scroll on down until we see motion controller and the motion controller source, we're gonna switch from left and then we're gonna just, again, click on it, type right, select right. And then also I'm gonna set this display device mode to true. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to see uh, temporarily like a placeholder controller of the Oculus. So this is the right one, I'm gonna move to the right. Doesn't really matter, these are gonna get moved anyways when we start playing. I'm gonna take the left one, which is already, again, its properties have been set for motion controller left, but the display model, turn that on, move this over to the left. One other thing you're gonna notice here is that this uh, parent tree is a little messed up in terms of how these are parented. So I'm just gonna drag the motion controllers out and hover over default scene root and make that the attachment. I'm gonna do the same for motion controller left. And basically what I wanna see is no little extra arrows besides the one next to scene root. This just means that nothing's parented to each other and you're not gonna get any like goofy stuff going on. So we can save, compile that. And then from here, I need a way to spawn in this pawn because by default when I play, it's not gonna spawn in my guy, um, at least not consistently. So again, we're going right over here to blueprint class. We're gonna go to game mode base. And what a game mode base, so I'm gonna type in um, quest to game mode as the name of this. Double click to open it up. And really it's just a set of data. So this just kind of defines like a game mode, like what gets spawned and how it gets used. So the default spawn is going to end up being our quest to pawn, which we already just made, which would be awesome. So we'll just do that, compile and save. So now we have a pawn in a game mode. So we need to set the game mode that's using our pawn. So we'll come back to edit, go to project settings, go to maps and modes, and then the default game mode, which is not that, we will set to quest to game mode, the thing we just made. So now Unreal is going to use our game mode, which uses our pawn. Now, the next thing to realize is that this pawn has a um, spawn point right in the center of it, okay? So if we go into our pawn, I want you to realize something. So if I visualize this, right now my camera and the default kind of point is at zero, zero, zero. So we can imagine a world where this camera is gonna to try to load in exactly in the center of this player start, okay? So what we can do is we can actually set this up a little bit so under our default scene root and our event graph of our quest to pawn, in event to begin play, there's a little bit of options we can do for setting up our camera. So we're gonna do set tracking, set tracking origin. So what does this mean? So we have a couple different options in here. Floor level and eye level are the two we'll just talk about quickly. So the floor level is going to set, move this quickly, this pawn, this zero, this point in the middle, this will be our virtual Oculus floor. So when you set the floor level inside your Quest 2, this point is the floor. So if we set this to floor level like this, we wanna make sure that our player start, oh, I'm moving everything around all nasty like, is even with the floor, if that makes any sense. So we're kind of getting, we're setting this point at the very center here as the floor by setting our pawn to be the floor. So if we do this and save, the player would always be different heights. If you didn't want the camera to be exactly where you need it to be in a game, you basically put this point exactly where you want, and in this, set it to eye level, which would be like kind of like exactly where the camera is in the game in Quest. So that way you could like really precisely place where the Quest 2 is gonna be. But I'm gonna set mine to floor level, compile, save. I'm gonna take this and just put it on the floor. Control S to save. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually try to play it in VR. So next to the play button here, we have a drop down arrow. There's an option here called VR preview. If we click on this, you're gonna see a window appear, hopefully. And then we're gonna take our Quest 2, put it on. I'm gonna try to grab my controllers here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into my Quest 2. 
I'm gonna record this. And once I'm inside my Quest 2, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to see my main settings. I'm gonna to go to the settings tab, Oculus Link, which we should have set up before. You might ask for permissions. As soon as we do that, you can see now we are previewing our world. I'm in a seated position. I can see my controllers. They're moving with my controllers in game. And we could test out our different functionality. If I want to take it off, I can just move my head up, come back to my computer, hit the escape key, and we'll drop right back. Pretty awesome, if you ask me. The other option besides the VR preview mode, which is pretty quick to do once our VR headset is attached, is to actually make a build and deploy it to the headset. So what does that mean? Well, what it does is under this launch button here, as long as we have our Quest 2 attached with the link cables, the software is installed right, you should be able to see your Quest 2 show up right here. And what ends up happening is uh, once we click on this, Unreal is gonna take our files for our project, it's gonna package them all up into a file, and it's gonna send it onto our headset, our Quest 2, and it's gonna save it on there actually. And what it'll allow us to do is play the game natively on the device. So when we do the preview, it's just kind of like sending the signal from the computer to us. But when we click this launch, we make a build this way, we can have an actual running version of the game and see what happens. Um, what I will say is some things are gonna look a little bit different. By default, the skybox in Unreal usually doesn't work well with mobile device, with the Android. So what we'd end up doing is here is come up to launch, click on Quest 2. Now, this can take a while. It's basically gonna start processing the outputs. I'm gonna click this show output log. This is gonna run through and do a bunch of work. Um, the first time you run this, it's gonna take a long time. Sometimes it will need to build all the shaders. Um, it will need to compile all the shaders to work in the build. Um, if you've already done that, it won't take too long at all. But don't be surprised if this takes a bit of time on your PC. Once it's done though, it'll basically confirm that the build is completed. And what you could end up doing is if your computer is already using the Oculus Link, you should be able to just see it on the device. Um, the other option is once it's built and deployed, in your options for software, you can go to unknown sources on your quest and see your builds there as well. So hopefully this makes sense and is pretty straightforward. So at this point now, you've done a lot. You've un installed Android applications, you've got your project up and running, you've got Oculus apps on your desktop, on your phone, and you should be able to now see your game, have it set up, and start deving it so that you can actually release it in the future. So if this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That's always useful. I know everybody says that, but it really does help. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.